I think they probably will end up on the roads. The, the question is slightly complex technically, but as much as anything it's about both acceptance and legislation and this kind of the social framework as much as the the technical thing, you know, is to do with insurance and, and law changes, but also do people feel confident in these things, being driven by these things, you know, is all, all part of it as well. So that you have that combination of, yes, the technology has to understand how these vehicles interact with maybe manual uh, vehicles and um, pedestrians and cyclists and so on. So there's a, a complexity to the automation, but then there's the, the sort of social side of it allowing them on the roads. That is very much at the research sort of forefront at the moment. You know, the, what data is needed is, is still a somewhat open question. You know, some of these vehicles it's thought might rely on cameras or laser scanning or the opposite end is highly detailed, so geographical maps, the sorts of things we produce at Ordnance Survey with high precision information plus the sensors then for collision detection. Um, each of those systems then has a different requirement really for the amount of data um, that is likely to be stored and having to be transferred. That if you're having to transfer updates kind of live over the air then that's, you know, that could be relatively high volume stuff. So that, the mix of networking then is also interesting that a lot of these systems have a view towards sort of 5G networks that will be coming in in the next few years which will be much higher bandwidth. Um, but it is, it's a particular study we're involved in at the moment. We have a consortium called Atlas that's funded by Innovate UK and the Government's Centre for Connected and Autonomous Vehicles, which is looking at exactly that, about how much data you place on the car, what's, what's being transferred between the internet of the car or car to car, or even to infrastructure that we build at the side of the road, so kind of local networking instead of internet net networking. In terms of the the market, I think it's a uh, you know really open as to who wins this this race. In some ways, being a car manufacturer at the moment is a bit like um, being, say, the a Nokia or a, a handset manufacturer from two thousand and four. But this time, you can see um, Apple or Google sort of riding over the horizon into your territory. So you have kind of the West Coast companies, the so Teslas, Apples and Googles all trying to produce their own thing and it, innovate the market. You have the incumbents working like crazy to, to maintain their market and innovate in this space. And then you have a kind of middle sector of the research organisations um, in, this, in this country, for example, in Oxford and Oxford, Bristol, Warwick, elsewhere, all producing their own systems as well. So what wins and how the market ends up being is a really exciting uh, component of this as well. You know, does this end up being effectively a software market where it's all about what you do in the car for three hours while it drives you somewhere as opposed to a hardware market? Does it matter if you've got the latest turbo anymore if you're in an automated vehicle that probably won't be allowed to exceed the speed limit and so on? You know, there could be quite a change to what it is to have a vehicle and, and uh, drive in it.